By the summer of 1999, Dan Benjamin and Steve Simon, director and senior director of the National Security Council's counterterrorism team, reviewed some old intelligence files and learned that Dr. Ayman al zawahiri head of the Egyptian Islamic Jihad and al-Qaeda's number two leader, had done fundraising in the United States just a few years earlier. They call FBI agents Michael Rolness and Steve Jennings to a meeting at the White House. Benjamin will recall, we said to them, this is incredible. al Zawari was here. He must have been fundraising. He had to have handlers. What can you tell us? And one of them said, we got it covered. Don't worry about it. And it was a blow up. Only later do Benjamin and Simon learn that one of al Zawari's hosts had been Ali Muhammad. Even though Muhammad is already in U.S. custody, and his arrest had been front page news by the time the White House meeting took place. The FBI still fails to pursue the connection and rejects an offer of new authority to monitor activity in radical mosques. Three months later, a large group of Islamic Jihad operatives are sentenced in Cairo in what becomes known as the trial of Albanian returnees. Various disclosures are made at the trial about the way the Egyptian Islamic Jihad operated and how it provided support to Al-Qaeda by forging travel documents, transferring money, and arranging communications. One of the revelations is that Al-Qaeda has a key communications hub in Yemen. Despite this revelation, Al-Qaeda will continue to use it. The defendants were arrested not only in Egypt, but also in Albania, Bulgaria, Azerbaijan, and the United Arab Emirates. Back in 1995, the CIA arranged a deal with Egypt to capture Egyptian Islamic Jihad operatives around the world and send them to Egypt to be tortured and prosecuted. 87 of the defendants are convicted. 10 are sentenced to death, including al Zawari, who was tried in absentia. One of the convicted is Khalid Abu al Dahab, who was operating a sleeper cell in California with double agent Ali Muhammad throughout the 1990s. Al Dahab is sentenced to 15 years in prison. There are credible reports that many of the defendants confessed after being tortured in Egypt and Albania. The trial nearly eradicates the remnants of the Egyptian Islamic Jihad in Egypt and, according to some of the defendants, leaves only about 40 members outside of Egypt. al Zawari and the other remaining members end up allying even closer to Al-Qaeda, in which they would formally merge in early 2001.